VA has the same thing. They call it a funding fee. And Cameron, I know you are a, a vet. Thank you for your service, so am I. Have you used your VA benefit or have you looked into it? The Actually, I have looked into it, but I have not used it. Um, All right. The funding fee can be very high, like one or two percent of the loan. Hmm. So that would be a so like if you go and buy a three hundred thousand dollar house, which qualifies for VA, you might be paying four to five thousand dollars in a funding fee just to get the VA loan. Hmm. All right. And if the, another thing, if they're disabled vet, that funding fee is waived, by the way. All right. That's so late. there are other fees that can be part of this. So you got to make sure that you understand where they are. Now, here's how they count for the expenses. They simply add up all of their credits, all of the debits, subtract them, and that tells you exactly how much the client either has to bring if they're the buyer or how much they're going to walk away with if they're the seller. I say that, but I'm also going to tell you uh, I have seen deals where sellers actually had to bring money to the table because we didn't sell it for enough or they had a whole bunch of liens. I have also seen buyers walk away with money because of all the credits they get and the 100% loan. I mean, I, I remember closing a property three, four years ago, five years ago, the seller, I mean, the buyer walked away from the closing with like $1,200 and a new home. Now they were 100% leveraged, but because of all the credits that got involved, they actually made money on the deal. That doesn't happen very much now, all right? Now, when they, yes, ma'am. One quick question. You said with all their credits they had, like how does one obtain all these credits in order to, you know, make money on a deal? We're going over it right now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Rick. <laughs> we'll get there. And I mean credits in the balancing. I don't mean like government grants or things like that. So. Hope, don't be expecting that answer from me, but I'll show you how a buyer gets credits and we're going to talk about it right here. So they add debits and credits up, costs and things you owe. There are some items that have to be prorated. Prorated is a real big fancy word for split. All right. And there are two ways to prorate the property. So let's go over here and get to this. The first thing we have to know is there are some bills that are either prepaid or accrued. Prepaid means what? They're paid at the beginning of the debt. You guys ever heard of prepaid cellular? You pay for it before you use it. Homeowners associations might be a prepaid example. You pay in January and then you use it the entire year. There are other bills that are called accrued, which you pay at the end based on how much you used. Most of the utilities that we use in today's world are accrued. They run your water bill at the end of the month. They look and see how much you used and they bill you at the end of the usage. So the first thing you need to know is, is the bill prepaid or accrued? Now, on the exam and in your homework, you are not going to be required to know which bills are which. It will literally say a prepaid bill of $400. It does not matter if it's homeowners, water, trash, cable, whatever. 
All you need to know is prepaid. And they will tell you a prepaid bill of 400 or accrued same way. You are not going to have to memorize, well, is HOA accrued or prepaid? They're not going to say that to you. They will say using an accrued bill of $500 or using a prepaid bill of 500 because the reality is what the bill is, is irrelevant. The only thing that's important is it's either prepaid or it's accrued. It's paid at the beginning of the usage or it's paid at the end of the usage. That's the only important thing you need to understand in this scenario. All right. So I thought I could move that. So prepaid and accrued. The other thing we're going to talk about is this thing they call a business year, uh, which is 360 days. 12 months times 30 days is 360. They use this business year as a concept to make the math really simple for you versus what they call a calendar year, which is 365 days. So they'll say using a business year or using a calendar year, because business is really easy. Every month has 30 days, which freaks you out because that means February actually has 30 days in a business year, all right? So you've got a prepaid or an accrued. You've got a business year and a calendar year. That Both of those become important in prorating a bill. So before we get into the math, Thumbs up. All right, here we go. So let's go through an example real quick. This is my monthly calendar, 30 days. We are going to close on the 11th of the month. This is the seller side of the table. This is the buyer side. The bill is a prepaid bill. Doesn't matter what it is. The prepaid bill is $180. So this bill has to be prorated or split between the buyer and the seller. So what I want to ask you is, does the seller get a credit or a debit and of how much money? And the second question is, does a buyer get a credit or a debit of how much money? So take a second here and think about this and tell me what you think you've got. Who gets what and of how much? It's a prepaid bill of 180 and we're closing on the 11th of the month and we need to split this on the closing disclosure. And I'm asking you, how much do we split and to whom goes the split? Christina? Would the seller, the seller would get a credit of $114. Guess I should do my math, but that sounds kind of close. Okay. Seller gets a credit of $114. Does anybody else get that or see it? So what happens on the buyer side, Christina? 
in your scenario? They would have a debit of $66. They would have a debit of $66. Anybody else get anything else or different? Please tell me somebody got something different because she is not correct. I had the buyer getting a debit of $64.80. That does not sound correct. All right. <laughs> so, Christina, tell me your first statement again. The seller would get a credit of $114. Right. I told you earlier. How many people are in this closing? Two. If the seller is getting a credit of $114, where's it coming from? The buyer would get a debit of $114. Don't, don't fret because you do what everybody else does. They try and balance that out because they're so used to accounting, but they fail to forget if the seller's getting a credit, if he's walking out of there with $114, who gave it to him? There's only one person that can give it to him. I ain't giving it to him. You ain't giving it to him. The title company's not giving it to him. So if the seller gets a credit for this amount of money, which is $114 credit, it can only come from one person. That means the buyer gets a debit of that money. He's the one paying the seller, all right? So everybody see what's going on? The seller pays it here, because it's prepaid, but he only uses this amount of money. So he gets back 19 days, and it's $6 a day, is $114 because he paid on the first 180, but day 12 through 30, he didn't own the house. The buyer owns it. So the buyer has to pay his portion. So the seller would get a credit on the closing disclosure of 114 and the buyer would get a debit of 114 to cover this amount right here that the buyer, i.e. the new owner, is using of whatever this is. Right? I see people just like in class. Don't stare at him in the eyes. He may call me. So how did you get the prepaid 180 bucks to that 114. Like what, what? What was the math between the 180 to 114? 180 is a made-up number that I told you was the price of the bill. Yeah, I know. Dollar bill. All right. Mm -hmm. So if it's 180 dollars, I made the math hopefully fairly simple, and that bill is for 30 days. How much is it per day? Six dollars a day. Mm -hmm. 180 divided by 30 is six dollars how yeah. many days did the owner said 19 did the seller own the property 11 11 and so it'd be minus equals that 19. so you could do it two ways you mm -hmm. can take the 180 Minus the $66, which is 11 times 6, mm. that he used, and he gets back the difference. Or you could say that the seller didn't use it 19 days, which is the difference between the 11th and the 30th. And 19 days at $6 is $114. So the seller gets back a credit on the closing of $114 for whatever this item is. It's irrelevant. All we know is it's prepaid. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm caught up now. I'm All right, cool. And that credit 
can only come from one other person. So the buyer will pay for that $114.